Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to this week's Elements Developer Diary. Now I've got a few things as always to cover this week, but first I want to talk about text editing in Elements. Now I know you guys are waiting for this for a more in-depth editor and we are working on it. We're just, it's not ready to show off yet. Um, we are shipping a new beta this week, has a lot of bug fixes in it, but the text editing is not ready to ship and um, Hopefully in the coming weeks, I will be able to show that off to you and we can discuss that and you can give feedback on it, etc. And make sure we're going in the right direction with it. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on, um, and this is kind of a gentle reminder, is when you signed up to use the Elements Beta, if you are on the um, using the beta, we did ask that you don't use this for client work and you don't build um, finished websites with it, I suppose, or don't rely on it to build finished websites um, because it is a beta and things will break and there is a warning in there that your projects might break. We're doing our best not to make that happen, um, but it really isn't ready to build client websites and you shouldn't be relying on it for things like that. And if you are building personal sites with it, you need to remember that things are changing and you will um, most likely have to rebuild your sites. So. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, I mean, it's all good practice. If you are building your sites with this, then you're familiar with the software and it'll be very quick to rebuild it. But just keep that in mind as you're using this software that things will break and change and um, yeah, you might have to rebuild things. We, and on that note, we are um, rapidly heading towards a public beta and getting it into more users' hands. And when we get to that public beta stage, that's when the software will become more stable and you can rely on it and we and there won't be breaking changes. Um, and I think as, as I said before, we wanna get that out before the end of the year. So we're not too far away from that. And with all your feedback, we've made some great changes and it's really honing the software and we're really turning into something that you guys want to use. We are, there's a few things, um, that we'll cover in the software in, in the update today. They are not in the beta, not in this week's beta, but they are coming soon. And probably the biggest thing is the new components. Now you'll notice up here, this says V2. Uh, if you look in there very closely, it's got a V2. And that's because we've, based on all your feedback, we have reworked how um, the way components work a little bit. We're trying to standardize them and really lean into Tailwind. So we're taking advantage of those utility first classes. So a lot of the components will have this uh, same set of um, basic things like sizing and layout, spacing, transition effects filters. So we're really standardizing on that. So, you know, if you're using a container or a flex or a grid, you'll know they're all very much the same. Um, or have the same options so you can easily dive in and change them and I've been working in with these for a week or so now some of these because it's still ongoing in development but it's really does seem like this is the way to go and it makes elements even more powerful than it was before and even more flexible so I'm going to look at the grid items today and kind of show you um, a little glimpse into how that works and how we've uh, well, how it's kind of simpler to use now than it was before, but it's also more flexible and powerful. Um, so let's go down here. I'm going to start on a simple, um, a simple example here. So we've got this meet the team area and I've laid these things out in a grid. So let's go to the node browser and here you can see I've got my grid and previously we'd recommend that you added grid items to here. So you have a grid, grid item, then the media object, another grid item, media object, another grid item, media object. And that created a lot of kind of wrappers and it was a lot harder to work with. So now we are, um, we're thinking things like container can be a container or it can be a flex, flex or a grid item. And I'll get to that in a moment. But here you can just drop items into a grid and they will behave as a grid item and this is really nice because it means we can uh, let me just switch this on so you can see this is using three grids here uh, three columns 
and I have that set up. And this content will just reflow as I switch it to two columns, one column, or we can go higher up and you can see now my content is just reflowing. And this is really lovely to work with and makes it very quick to uh, reflow things and, and you know, kind of just uh, play around with the design. Uh, and it's obviously instant feedback, WYSIWYG, so real nice. So that's a very simple example there. Um, but if we go up to this recent, recent projects area, I've got a grid item again, but this time I've got containers in here. And it works the same as in I can change these columns and you can see the content just reflows. And this is really handy for when you're doing responsive design. So at my mobile breakpoint, I could have it like this. And as I come up to iPad, I could have it like this. And then desktop, you know, we could make it like this. And that's really easy to do in here. Um, we can just, uh, we use this little blue dot here as we're on the different breakpoints and we can change that. Um, but we're not here to talk about that today. I wanted to show you how, while these are all containers, and I have this set up in the grid item with a container and just a heading in the middle. I've used the container because I wanted to put a background image in here. Um, but it doesn't have to be a container anymore. We now have this grid and flex option. So a container can be a grid or a flex item. And why would you want to do this? Well, at the moment, our grid is set to four columns, as you can see here. Um, there's a little red overlay, but they fill the area. So it is a bit hard to see there, but it's four columns and we can see that here. But what if I wanted this container to stretch to two columns? Well, I can tell it to be a grid item and override it from rather than just being, you know, just filling that one column, which everything will do by default. So now I've turned this container into a grid item. And at the moment, the columns are on auto, so it's just going to fill that one area. But I can increase this and now it's going to fill two or three or full width. And these other ones stay the same. Um, so this is really nice and really quick to do again, do build those layouts you want to build. Um, so this one, let's go to this container here. So let's make uh, this a grid item. And I'll make this one, we want this one, oh, this could be two. And uh, again, I could on this container, I could turn it to a grid item and I could make that one too. So now we've got this unique layout that was really, it's really easy to play around with. You know, I can click in here, boom. Uh, actually, and let's, uh, actually, let's make that one and we'll make this one four, Oops, right, three. Um, so you'll see how quick that is to work with and how we've just literally changed that layout. It's all WYSIWYG and we're seeing it live. It's really, really nice to work with. So that's kind of a little glimpse at how we're changing these components for the better. And this is all based on your feedback um, because there was kind of a, on the forum, there was talk of, well, why aren't you leaning into Tailwind? and allowing us to apply these classes to anything because that's what Tailwind is good at. It, you can just apply these classes to the wrapper and you can um, give it different values. So we're kind of leaning more into Tailwind. And while it does make the, the software a little bit more advanced maybe, a little bit more professional, we think that is the right way to go. While elements will be easy to use, um, for anyone because we'll have projects included that you can just open up and use. We we think we're aiming for slightly, um, not that really beginner level, we're, we're aiming slightly up for a more um, competent user, slightly on the advanced side because we want people to be able to build really great websites with this and have the power to do this. Um, and this seems like the way to go with it. So there's a little glimpse of the V2 components we're building. Lots of really great stuff in here, and it really will be an improvement um, once we finish these. And this will all be uh, part of the coming betas we'll publish soon. I hope 
we can get these in there sooner rather than later for you guys to play with and give us feedback on. Um, but this is all our run up and push to getting elements out as a public beta later this year. So, all right, um, that's enough for today. I hope you found this useful and uh, kind of giving you a bit of an insight where we're headed. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for supporting Elements and coming along for this journey. And um, yeah, I will see you next week. All right, thanks for watching. Cheers, bye. Yeah.